Good afternoon. This is Rich Ness with Open Systems Media, and I am here for this week's installment of Five Minutes With. This week, I have the pleasure of speaking with Gordon Kruberg, who is the president and CEO of Gumsticks. Hello, Gordon. How are you? Hi. I'm very well, thank you. Good afternoon. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. So you are the president and CEO and also the founder of Gumsticks, which um, is an interesting company. You guys do uh, development kits. Um, what I found interesting is that while these development kits are very much in vogue today, they were not so in vogue when you started this company back um, uh, around 2003. So what gave you the idea that this would be a successful concept back way before anybody else had ever thought of this? Well, uh, specifically, when I started, my goal was to build a motherboard for robotics. And so I you know, kind of characterized what it was that was really important to be able to do distributed computing in something that really I had in mind the idea of doing an Android. So I knew we needed a powerful and tiny platform in order to manage distributed computing. I designed a form factor that would fit in any you know, robotic member. Uh, and the, the problem was when I started, the consensus was that the PC-104 form factor was small enough for anything that anyone wanted to do. So I really needed to design my own tiny form factor. Uh, at the same time, you know, I've got a long history with software companies, stretching back, well, at this point, several decades, uh, including CEO of an open, open source software company. Uh, and I understood the value of, or certainly the value to hardware, design, uh, hardware developers of being able to use the vast library of free and open source software tools so I knew, to, I knew that I needed to port Linux onto this board that I was doing. And, and uh, by the way, there's a saying we have in the company here uh, that the magic is in the software. Uh, it's the community of free and open source software that really made the, uh, the growth of this sector possible. Uh, and then finally, sorry, go ahead. I said that's pretty interesting. Uh, along those same lines, you also were on the Linux bandwagon before it was, um, you know, something that people were really rallying around. Did, did you have the same thoughts about Linux? A absolutely. In, in, in order to really do what we needed to do on the platform, we had to have Linux and not just embedded Linux. Uh, at the time, there was a, a port, a UC Linux port um, that you use UC LibC, and we knew that we needed a, a, a glibc port that really opened all doors to Linux for these small platforms, and we were the first platform available that had a full implementation of Linux. That's, that, that's great. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at your bio here, and I see you've also had a lot of history on the investor side of the business. Most of the people who I talk to um, who are running these technology companies are – are, are very focused engineering, and they haven't done much except be an engineer. But you're, you also have the history of being an investor. Does that help you in guiding the company? Well, that was a long time ago. Uh, yeah, I guess this has been a longer haul than I thought, and it, it has certainly helped me to understand, uh, understand the business. I think most importantly, and it helps me to uh, constantly question and uh, understand where it is that we're placing our bets uh, and what our core values are, or at least at least I tend to believe that I understand those. Um, when we started out to build the platform, uh, you know, as I mentioned just a moment ago, we built a platform for innovation in robotics. It turned out that. Uh, you know, even though robotics was beginning, uh, it was still a very tiny market. And we saw a lot of our devices being bought by people who were doing what is now called Internet of Things. It was emerging along the lines of smartphones and tablets and other devices. Um, and I guess as a side note, IoT is not new to us. We've been on Internet versions of pretty commonplace equipment, even, even like um, farm equipment for years. Um, but as an investor, you know, I knew that, that I had to be aware that even though I wanted this to be the standard robotics platform, it was important to listen to customers and ensure that we supported them even outside the original idea for the company. So, you know, overall, we've been, we've been successful in providing a – well, we have been and we had been a successful company in providing a compelling technology for others. 
uh, you know, in smartphones, tablets, satellites, and drones. Um, and even though we're not as large a company as we'd plan to be, um, if we'd uh, sorry, even though we're not as large a company as we'd uh, been in, uh, you know, tablets or phones, I think we've still made our impact. And we do concentrate on what it is that is our our core value, and that is you know position, being positioned to provide a ramp to production for intelligent devices and and new ideas. Okay, uh, okay. So you brought up something that, that's interesting um, in in the development kit business. You're competing with a lot of guys who are looking at development kits um, not as a, a way to make money, but as a way to get their uh, chips in people's hands. The big semiconductor guys um, are not really looking to make money with their kits. They're looking to jumpstart people who will buy thousands of chips or hundreds of thousands of chips or millions of chips. So how do you make money at a business where the competition is, is looking to not make money? Well, I think that uh, – well, so let's, let's look back. When we started, uh, dev kit prices were in the 1500 to $2,500 price point. A lot has changed, and I, I like to think that we helped to change that old mindset. Um, you know, let's concentrate on the core idea, and that is that, you know, their idea uh, it, or their value is to sell chips in high volumes and to encourage the, uh, the design of new ideas that will sell, you know, ideally for them, tens, hundreds, and tens, hundreds of thousands to millions of one particular chip. So over the course of the last 10 years, we've seen, you know, gumsticks come out, ori- you know, originally with $150 to $200 price point against their $1,500 to, to $2,000. And then, you know, three or four years ago, Raspberry Pi came out and, and, you know, really changed the dynamic of the market with a, you know, with a $25 to $35 uh, euro uh, price point product. And, and what that has done is really concentrated the idea of distributed initiatives. You know, we're seeing all sorts of uh, new hardware platforms emerge from this, this new generation of innovation. It's really exciting. But it doesn't change the idea that, you know, we're in, in a partnership with, uh, well, for us specifically, uh, and it's not a it's not a written partnership. We're in a partnership with companies like Texas Instruments. Um, they're great at recognizing the niche for companies like Gumsticks and and others, where we are both in the business of enabling the uh, the uh, end designer, the design engineer, with coming out with an idea that can make it big. Um, so remember that you know standard boards also are not the finished product that is going to make it into a package uh, for any one of these successful uh, you know designers integrators of their semiconductors. So we think that you know our own our own product in house, the Geppetto Design to Order, fills a niche that takes these design kits from you know this core base idea that allows somebody to innovate to something that is a, you know, um, a finished product in really rapid order. So I, I guess in summary, overall, we're, we're both in the business of selling their chips, and we both win by making, you know, electronic design simple and inexpensive and making the ramp to production so rapid that we really do enable the next generation of innovation. Okay, I'll buy that. Uh, unfortunately, we are out of time. Uh, (laughs) That was this week's segment of Five Minutes With, and this week we had Gordon Kruberg from Gumsticks. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you very much. This has been fun.